Good afternoon, everyone. We have arrived in Deuteronomy chapter 27. It begins with, and then, meaning after chapter 26 sometime, Moses, together with the elders of Israel, it has always been the elders that represent all the tribes of Israel. And this is concerning a command instructed and this is a serious instruction instructed the people and this is what they said it says keep all the commandments uh keep all the commandments well in in, in hebrew is only it's singular but in English, it, it's very difficult to use the singular here, which I command you today. And so this word command, commandment, commanded, they all come from the same root. Uh, yat, uh, uh, zava, basically to give a charge. You know how at the end of uh, the day, when there is something uh, solemn that needs to be said, then they would lay a charge. And in, in many cases, these are very solemn words that they must remember. Now, Moses and the elders of Israel, meaning these are the ones that is recognized as the patriarchs of the generation. And he says, keep. Now, this word keep literally means uh, you shall uh well i guess ongoing guard this gives a, a a picture that it is a continuous thing that's going to happen this one keep is not a one time thing it is an ongoing continuous instruction which i command you today and this is the time when it is being recorded now, always remember what is recorded. So we have recorded and transmitted. One by writing and one by verbal. There is oral transmission and there is written records. What we are reading now as regards to the command that Moses is giving is what is being recorded for all time. What is said is very likely to be a whole lot more and those things are transmitted to the children and the children's children. And so this is generally called the oral Torah. And what is recorded as we read is called the written Torah. And so the transmission is actually done from a cultural, social aspect. Now, this chapter is quite interesting because it gives us a very interesting picture lesson. Picture lessons generally means that there are certain events and actions that need to be done to express the instructions. And so this is the instruction. It shall be on the day when you cross over the Jordan. This means that they are still on the eastern shore of the Jordan. To the land which the Lord your God is giving you, that you shall set up for yourselves large stones, big boulders, right? Big ones. And whitewash them with lime. And it means that the stones are going to be turned white. And once they are turned white, you find that you are to write on them all the words of this Torah. When you have crossed over that you may enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord your God 
your fathers of your fathers promised you. And so this whole idea of this law, all the words of this Torah is what is in this chapter. Right? What's in this chapter? And this is the significance. When they enter, they would always enter with the words of the Torah. So that they always remember that this is the what we call the, the precondition of entering into the land. This land is flowing with milk and honey. It's very rich. Just as the father, uh, as God promised their fathers have said it to them. Therefore it shall be. When you have crossed over the Jordan, and it says here, on Mount Eval, you shall set up these stones which I command you today, and you shall whitewash them with lime, and you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use iron on them. You shall build with whole stones of the altar of the Lord your God and offer burnt offerings to the Lord your God on it. Now, just before we move on, there has been, I don't know, when we read this, you understand that there will be large stones the large stones is going to be built into an altar. And then in the large stones, there will be words of these Torah, which is the rest of the words in chapter 27. And it is to remind them that this is the first thing you have to do when you cross over. And when they cross over the Jordan, there is Mount Eval. Now, the Samaritans in their Samaritan Torah has this as Mount Gerizim, which eventually they built a temple on Mount Gerizim. They think that the uh, Hebrew manuscript of Mount Eval is wrong, but we have it today as Mount Eval. And so the Jews of the day rejected the Samaritans' temple. So just as a sidebar, you know that this is a controversial item that this was written as Mount Gerizim in the Samaritans Torah. Now, these mountains are important and I shall describe to you shortly. In verse 7, you continue to offer peace offerings. Now, Peace offerings in verse 7 is like how we have talked about this is the Shalamim, the, the, the Shalem, the completeness offering. You shall eat there, rejoice before the Lord your God, and you shall write very plainly on these stones these words, all the words of this Torah. Now, they are going to speak the Torah. They are not writing it down yet. And so Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel saying, and these are the words of the Torah. Take heed and listen, O Israel. Now verse 9 says, take heed and listen. The first word here, uh, is to keep silent. That is what this word is. Keep silent. All be silent. And hear, O Israel, this day you have become the people of the Lord your God. The people of the Lord your God are always connected by the Torah. And so the Torah is going to be given one more time, but in a slightly different fashion. Therefore, you shall obey the voice of the Lord your God. You'd be surprised that um, in verse 10, this word here, obey, is the same word as this word here. 
you shall hear the sound of the Lord your God. All these Torah that's being mentioned by Moses, they are God's words. And observe. Now, this word here, observe his commands. First, you hear the sounds. And the word observe here actually means do. Not think. Do his commands and his statutes, which I command you today. See, one of the interesting things is in Hebrew, they keep using the same word, command, commandments. And, and, and it really tells you this is what God is instructed. Now, what we are reading again, just for recap, we are reading what is written down, recorded. Not everything is recorded. And so whatever is not recorded and passed down is called oral law. And so they are to hear and they are to do. And the rest of this de depicts what the Torah is to be written onto those stones that made the altar on Mount Eval. Verse 11. Moses commanded the people on the same day saying, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim, and then you have uh, to bless the people there. When you cross over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, uh, Yosef, Binyamin. And these shall stand on Mount Eval to curse Reuven, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, Naphtali. So you have 12 tribes. Two mountains. Now, if you stand on the east and look towards the two mountains, it looks like this. We have Eval and we have Gerizim. And on top of Mount Eval, you have the altar of stones. In between, it is quite interesting, you find Shechem. In between. And when they cross over, they are to stand on both sides, right? Both sides. And in that standing on both sides, then you find that you have the priest standing in the middle to bless and to curse. Now, understand uh, the idea of curse. This is kalala. And this is to say uh, bad things. Bless is to say good things. Curse is to say bad things. And so that's the picture we are painted in verse 11, 12, and 13. And this is how we are structured. Okay? We have Mount Gerizim and Mount Eval. And people are standing on top. And then you have your stones. Now, what's the difference between cursing and blessing? And I have just briefly described. Bless is to say, pronounce good things. Curse is to pronounce bad things. But when you read the rest of chapter 27, you would invariably find that there is only cursing. There's only cursing. So where is the blessing? So let me ex just explain to you based on the same words. Same words. Uh, we are then using it for both curse and bless. So let me just explain from verse 14. 
Now, this word, curse, is really to say something bad, something bad will happen to someone who is like that. Uh, it's important for all of us to understand that that's how the word is used. Let's look at verse 14. So we find that the Levites will speak out with a loud voice and say to all the men of Israel. Now we say all the men of Israel, we have a slight problem, isn't it? We have two groups, one on Mount Gerizim and one on Mount Eval. So what about all the men of Israel? And so what is going to happen is this. These words, curse, is also blessed. Blessed is the one who do not do. Curse is the one who do. I hope you can see how this is structured. The blessing is given to those who do not do. The cursing is given the one who does it. And so if you think of it this way, you find that the Levites who face Mount Gerizim and says, Bless is the one who do not make a carved or molded image and abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and set it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Now understand that this word, Amen, is Hebrew. He it says, it's true. Right? It is true. It is sure, uh, so be it. You agree to it, truly, verily, uh, this is the truth. You agree to it, and that was everything to do with our main. And so as we go through the rest of this chapter, you are to be aware that all these words are spoken twice. One's facing Mount Gerizim, the second one facing Mount Eval, and he would say, Curse is the one who makes a carved or molded image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of his hands of the craftsmen, and set it up in secret. And all the people on this side shall say, Amen. You notice, it is not cursing the people. These are the laws. These are the instructions. These are the words that God wants them to, to know. The blessings are to those who do not do it. The cursings are to those who does it. And so when you continue, you will see this. Curse is the one who treats his father and mother with contempt. Now this word contempt literally means dishonor. But blessing is the one who treats his father and mother with honor. So you find that these are all opposites. The blessings are given in pairs. And so you find all of this in the Ten Commandments. You know, Honor your father and your mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who moves his neighbor's landmark. And that's coveting his land. And all the people shall say, Amen. So blessing is the one who does not move his neighbor's landmark. And all the people shall also say, Amen. Verse 18. It says, Curse is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road. And so you find in, in the opposite, Blessed is the one who does not make the blind wander off the road. And so this would be injustice. You are hurting people who are helpless, people who cannot help themselves. That will be injustice. And all the people shall say, Amen. Then we go on to see, Curse is the one who perverts justice due to the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Remember, this is the fatherless, is the orphans. Widow is Husbandless. Both are without a man, 
the stranger in verse 19, which is the Gare, owns nothing, owns no land. And so they would need help too. And so the one who perverts justice, who bends justice, uh, what else do we say? This is the person who, who actually extends, bends, perverts, turns the justice against these people, then God is going after him. And so blessings is the one who does not pervert the justice. And all the people shall say, Amen. You find in verse 20, curse is the one who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's bed. And so this idea of uncovering uh, is a very Hebrew concept with regards to the father's wife. When we say the father's wife, it would be the father's woman. And so if you lie with the father's woman, and this word is to have sex, it is an abomination. And so blessing is the one who does not do this. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with any kind of animal. This is bestiality. Sex with animals. And there is a cursing in the book of Leviticus. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. Blessing is the one who doesn't do that. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. All of this is recorded in Numbers. Uh, sorry, in, in the book of Leviticus. Cursed is the one who attacks his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. It's very close to not coveting, not bearing false witness. Cursed is the one who takes a bride to slay an innocent person. Thou shalt not kill. All the people shall say, Amen. And cursed is the one who does not confirm all the law, words of this law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Now, I want to spend a bit of time trying to explain this. We have the, all of this is called the Torah. And it's to be written on the whitewash or uh, stones using lime. And it's written in that way. Now, this word confirm means to establish, to make stand. To cause to be valid. So the cursing is on the one who denies the words of this Torah. The blessing is on one who validates the words of this Torah. Now, all of this has to be obey, right? The word here is obey. Obey means to, to understand and then to do something about it. And so we have two sorts of laws here or the Torah here. Uh, do with blessing, do with curse. And quite interestingly, in this passage here, the one in curse is do not do. Do not do what is said. Here is do the opposite. So you find curse is the one who does not validate all the words of this Torah. Blessing is the one who validates all the words of this Torah. So you notice it is quite a simple instruction. Even a five-year-old can understand. All Moses is instructing them is, I am giving you all the negative that is written down. But in actual reading out, there is always a positive for blessing. 
and the negative for cursing. And it's not to curse the people. It is a picture lesson when they are standing there on the mountain and with a loud voice, the Levites who read all this out, they are to say, Amen, I agree. In that sense, when they enter into the promised land, they have agreed to all the terms and conditions of using the land. This is the importance of chapter 27. It is so important that I think we don't have a, an option to think otherwise. Right? We don't have an option to think otherwise. When we get to chapter 28, then you would see that we have a list of blessings. The blessings are what they have to do. And of course, the opposite will be true, that the cursings will be quite the opposite of what is said. So in chapter 27, we are primarily focused on the cursing to warn the children of Israel if you breach all these laws, you will be punished. You will be cursed. If you don't, you will continue to live in the land. So the blessings you can see is, you know, you get to carry on. This is as usual. Like in the Garden of Eden, uh, before we get to chapter 3, They've been in the garden, and if they've been in the garden, they've been obeying God all through until chapter 3. But we don't have anything written about those period of time. But that was a period of time when they were happily following. Do not eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And they follow exactly, don't eat. But for the rest that they eat, what happens? They get to stay in the garden. And now when they enter into the promised land, chapter 27 tells them, don't do these things. And so they stay away from doing them and they get to stay in the land. So they are called blessed if they don't do. So blessing and cursing, in this case, you find that they are not defined exactly how one is blessed and exactly how one is cursed. But this has to do with how individually they act, they behave, and collectively as a nation affects the sanctity of the nation. Now, today we have completed chapter 27, which is all on the curses. And is it easy to follow the curses? Absolutely. God is a fair God. And for them, not doing it should be a second nature. But God is warning them in the event they are tempted to do so, don't. Now, chapter 28, next, uh, the next time we come together, is a very long passage. But go back and read it so you have a much better idea why it's like that. And with this, we come to the end of our session today.